Hi, uh, this is Ayyub Rabah. I'm a student at the Berenboim side for music. I play the cello, obviously, and today I'm going to attempt to analyze the Alkal Cello Concerto, the first movement of it. Um, I've been a student at the foundation since 2011 and it's been a big part of my life. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to like divide the piece into four sections: the beginning, then the theme, then the development, and then the return of the theme. Um, so I'm going to analyze. Um, so a lot of talking, <laughs> and um, I'm going to play the and demonstrate a little bit. And then um, we'll put the recording um, of me with the piano accompaniment. So before we talk about the piece and I'll analyze it and play, uh, we need to talk about the history of the piece. So the piece was written um, after the world, First World War. Um, Elgar was quite old. His wife was, was also sick. Um, also she died like a few years after after writing the concerto so obviously all of that affected his his uh, composing on the piece on the concerto he composed the piece at a cottage he owned uh, which uh, during the first world war uh, like a few years before writing the piece um, he used to hear from there the artillery of the the war from France from the from the river. So this affected the piece um, a lot, obviously, um, and it it was told that uh, after the war and after he did an operation on his body. Uh, which was uh, quite dangerous for a man his age, he was in his 60s. Um, uh, it was told that uh, his music changed. Um, also after I will talk a little bit about the theme of the first movement and I will talk about it, its history as well. Now I am going to play the introduction bit. Um, then let's see what happens after that. <laughs> Uh, before I play it, I just want you to imagine with me. I want you to imagine if, if this, uh, as if the um, the soloist, the the part I'm going to play, is a lone soldier, the last soldier remaining at a battlefield after the war, and he's just looking at the uh, looking at the battlefield um, alone. And it's very flat, nothing happening, nothing moving, and he's he's just wondering how will he cope with this. So, as you see, it's a very dramatic piece. Um, it starts um, unlike any cello concerto I have ever played, <laughs> and um, it starts with a uh, with with the soloist, and he starts with two chords. Those two chords are um, um, interestingly uh, they are the same chord 
uh, the code of me, which is the piece, uh, which is what the piece is written in, uh, and they are played twice, but in different um, variations, let's say. So the first one is uh, together, and the second one is. So they are the same code if you rearrange them in a certain way. Uh, so uh, starting the piece with two chords that are the same is an indication that uh, nothing is moving um, and there is nothing happening. <laughs> um, then after um, where I play this part uh, this part I play alone, and so I think it is uh, for me. I at least I think he's wondering how how will he cope with this, with all of this, and asking himself questions. Where is everyone? Is everyone that and all that? And um, uh, we see at the end of it. Um, this last note I, I just played um, is a dissonance, uh, which is which means that it's not in the scale, uh, the original scale which the piece was written in, um, and and then this note the which is the supertonic, which is like the second note of the scale, the f it, which is the fa. Um, uh, it ma makes you feel as if it doesn't belong in the piece. And later in the theme you'll, you'll see more of that and I'll talk more of that. Let's move on to the theme. The theme... Um, before I, I start playing it, I want to... Uh, tell a little backstory of the theme. Uh, the theme was written by Elgar after he had the operation, right after he he had the operation and he was awake. Um, he requested a pen and a paper, and he wrote the melody of it, uh, which we see a lot of in this movement. Uh, also, Elgar said um, uh, considered his tune. Um, and he said, if you ever hear someone whistling this melody around the Malvern uh, Hills, this will be me. <laughs> so, he obviously really liked this melody. And, um, yeah, it was a big part of this concert. Uh, I want you to imagine, in the whole piece, I want to imagine that the, the person, uh, which is the soloist, the soloist is the the soldier as I told you before and I want you to imagine also the uh, the orchestra part or the what the orchestra plays is the the orchestra is like the voice in the the soldier's head and uh, we will see after it makes a lot of difference in his decisions and how he acts okay so now I'll play the, the thing starts playing the melody and the violas play it um, and then after they finish the melody um, I take it from them and I play almost the same and when and uh, that shows that the voice in his head is kind of controlling him but he doesn't realize that and he just does what the voice says but um, I play um, dissonance as, as the first note. That means, um, as we said before, it's uh, it's unstable. 
and uh, the interesting thing about this is that we play dissonances more than we play the notes, notes that are stable so it's more unstable than it is stable um, uh, also I think um, uh, when when I start the the soloist starts to play something this different than the the orchestra uh, the orchestra starts to get a little bit mad like uh, the volume gets higher and obviously they don't accept what he is doing like for example um, here I play it differently than what the violas did before. <laughs> shows you that it is still okay when I play this um, it, uh, it plays the main theme which is so um, it wants to uh, me to go back to that theme then I think um, an important part uh, that I should talk about um, uh, which I don't want to play all of it, but um, um, uh, there is a part after the theme. I'm going to play just the end of it, and then I want to play the part where all the piece since the beginning uh, was heading to. <laughs> Obviously this part is um, very emotional and um, before uh, in the build up um, it shows that he has more confidence and his confidence is uh, rising <laughs> and uh, uh, where all the piece had had to since the beginning is this part so. Um, I think this part is one um, the most confident part so far, and what can lead uh, can uh, show us that is that um, remember before we, uh, I told you um, uh, the beginning of the theme was the dissonant. The long notes were uh, were the not right notes, the unstable notes, and now it's quite the opposite. Now it's it starts with the me, which is the the root, which is um, the most stable note in the whole scale. So this shows that he has a lot of confidence now. Before all of this, I feel that um, the build up uh, was him trying to try something new, and. So uh, in this confident part, he thought it worked, and he plays all the scale, and he's very excited, and um, he thought it works, but also he's still like uh, it's very emotional still, so uh, it's not happy, <laughs> um, but it is um, a way he he tried to de to deal with the with the situation. Uh, after he returns to... Uh, uh, what I fi find really interesting um, is after he, re he returns to the same theme as the beginning, the, the one with the dissonance, so uh, it's very confusing that after all of this um, uh, confident part, he goes back to the unstable and unsure part thing, and then interestingly um, it changes so uh, I play the theme again um, 
And then here it changes. So, um, you can see here, um, there's a change of um, thinking, a way of thinking. So now he, he just gives up and it simply stops, like, and then it dies. So, interestingly, um, uh, the mind is kind of teasing the soloist and saying and making fun of him. The voice in the head is making him suffer, let's say. <laughs> so um, then uh, the soloist comes in and uh, he doesn't follow what what the what the voice in the head tells him. So. I think that's a sign that uh, there's no trust to this voice anymore and uh, he, sh he shows the voice that he is really hurt and um, with playing this and then the orchestra makes a very similar rhythmic uh, um, thing as they played before um, and it's still sarcastic and it's still making fun of him <laughs> and then um, he's back and he's in pain even more um, and then interestingly he plays the same uh, rhythm as the, or as the orchestra which is the voice in the, his head but he plays it very silently in pianissimo and it's very high in the cello so um, that shows that he's really insecure about uh, about it and he still doesn't trust the voice but he can't make it kill him <laughs> or uh, make fun of him uh, all the time. So I think um, um, what uh, what this means that he plays it up here and it's very soft. I think it means that uh, also he's saying in his head, like um, not in his head because the voice in, is in his head, but he's feeling it. <laughs> uh, so he's feeling as if um, this voice doesn't understand what he's been through. Um, so this uh, shows that um, they may struggle after. <laughs> so and then um, these four notes, the same two notes repeated uh, two times. This shows as if he was really crying and um, he just wants a breath. and. And then, interestingly, he, he, for the first time in the peaks, he starts a um, rhythm um, and he, he starts with this f positive part and it's um, like one of them um, and still he has this unstableness in the rhythm. Uh, now it's not the notes, it's, it's the rhythm. The rhythm is not really stable, so you can see that now. What I mean it's, uh, that it's not really stable is the this one. <laughs> so um, 
So, um, it shows that he wants to try something new, he doesn't want to keep in the same mindset, but uh, he still has this doubt and um, lack of confidence. Um, and then uh, he stops to hear what the orchestra has to say, uh, and then he plays. confidence in himself again. So here also he changes the rhythm into a more stable one, so he's uh, more confident and more um, comf comfortable. Um, This is more comfortable than the... Uh, he is trying something new and he, is th he thinks it's working again. And then, interestingly, the orchestra comes back to the... to the... Um, to the part, the sarcastic part. So obviously the voice in the head isn't changing and... Um, that really frust frustrates him, the soloist, the soldier, and he's back to the pain. He's more hurt and like almost uh, giving up. Very surprising part, the one that the one I just played uh, before, and then he just uh, I think it's a moment of um, uh, war cry. <laughs> He's shouting and um, really frustrated, and he doesn't know what to do. Um, and then uh, he comes down and. He goes back to the very unstable theme. Interestingly, the orchestra part has more voices and more like details, and this shows that after all this pain, he is back to remembering the the horrible thing that happened. It goes back to the trying the a new thing to get more confident, which is. Uh, yeah, and uh, obviously this time there there's more detail and more um, more things in it. The orchestra plays the normal part, but he tries to interrupt and change the fate <laughs> at the very last second. So he interrupts the the orchestra, which plays the normal part after the scale for the first time with a. see he's back to the theme so obviously that didn't work and yes he is back to the the sadness so obviously this didn't work and now uh, at the very end of the first movement um, he plays the one where he gives up and dies again um, 
which is which, go, which goes like this. <laughs> keeps the mean which is a, as if it's completely that so this is what I think about the Elgo and this piece um, for me is, it's very special because um, I feel the soldier is, uh, is a shy person and every little detail affects him some way and um, <laughs> I feel that's me sometimes <laughs> um, and also I think uh, uh, when things are uh, things aren't going that well um, you can always play Elgar and just uh, unleash <laughs> your pain or anger or anything <laughs> so yeah it was very important for me to play this and um, it's one of my favorite pieces, and um, I, ve I very much enjoy playing it every time. <laughs> and of course, um, this is just my opinion. Um, anyone else can have different ones, and I may be wrong still. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.